Hi, welcome to Mission at Night. Today with my host Kimmy, we are here to uncover the no bullshit stories from successful individuals at Ignite Your Dreams to Success. We're thrilled to welcome Jian Yong, the visionary founder of Happy Fish Swim School. Jian Yong started his entrepreneurial journey to reach his polytechnic days and has since transformed his passion into an extraordinary success today. Do you know that Happy Fish School right now is a flourishing enterprise with 16 indoor pools both in Singapore and Malaysia? Wow. Okay, so let's find out more about this journey. Let's welcome Tian Yong. Hello. Hi, Hello. Kili. Hi, Kimi. <laughs> Can you tell me more about yourself? Well, uh, I'm 36 this year and I teach babies to swim. That's, that's my job. And I'm a father of three as well. Wow, three, yeah? Yes. Wow. So... So if, if you do not know, right, Jen is a very special guest to me. Right. right because I, I know him for a very long time. He was my poly senior. Mm-hmm. So we oh. lost contact and recently lost contact again, reconnected again. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, I know about this thing that you started Happy Fish in poly itself. Yes. Okay. okay. So you must let me know how, how did it all started? Well, uh, it was the third year of my poly life mm-hmm. and I was having my final year project and you know i finished my project pretty fast there was nothing much to do so i was just thinking what else can i do then i chance upon digital marketing back then it was called internet marketing uh-huh. yeah. where you have to promote things on social and uh, not social media back then there was no social media uh, it's just friendster you know is uh-huh. it still like dial up uh, no no dial up <laughs> no dial up but uh, we were trying to promote things on google mm. uh, i tried out different things like you know promoting affiliate marketing of different products. But it just didn't work out. So, but it just come to my mind that, you know, I'm a swimmer mm. and I love to teach people to swim. Why not let's do something about that? That's how it comes about. And then I spent my second half of my final year project doing this, uh, doing this project, yeah. But why babies though? Well, it wasn't started as a baby swim school. Uh, it was just a platform to connect swimming instructor with the students because oh. I was teaching myself. I, mm-hmm. I went to different condo to to teach back then when I was okay. 17 years old, you know, working part-time and study at the same time. Yeah, but uh, it was tough to find students. So we need to rely on agent. And uh, there were agents who help you to find students and then they will take a commission out of it. I thought that was a good model, you know, but it wasn't, uh, there wasn't any platform on Google that I can, you know, rely on like a a, 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 a major one, you know, yeah. it's only all those smaller agents. So I thought, you know, uh, I can do it. Uh, I have the knowledge. I know how to put the website on uh, search engine number one. So I did that. And surprisingly, surprisingly, there were a lot of inquiries on the first day when I launched it. So you became the agent. Ah? Yeah, I became the agent. <laughs> so from relying on agent, I became the agent. The biggest agent. Yeah, <laughs> to become the biggest agent. Yeah, there wasn't much competition. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah, so it was pretty easy to get there. It was 2007, so it's like very grandfather era, you know? Right time, right yeah. time. It's not that far. It's okay, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So from the internet era, yeah. what changes to the swim school? Well, uh, four years into the journey, I just found that we are hitting a plateau and there was no no growth anymore. You know, there's only this number of people who want to learn swimming and you can only take a commission out of it once, you know. Uh-huh. Mm. And, and in order for the business to continue to grow, to scale up, we need to have a structure where we run it like a school. Yeah. So that's where I start to recruit coaches full-time. Mm-hmm. Not, not full-time back then, was it part-time. So, you know, I impart my skills to them and then I put them to those uh, swimming tests, um, those uh, instructor tests, and they become full, they become instructor. And I pass them the assignment myself. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we, we run it like a school, more structured with our own curriculum, with our own, you know, uh, uh, payment system, everything. Yeah, we, we were running at the public pool. Back Public then. pool. Public pool. And today you have what, 16 indoor pool, right? Yeah, I 16 saw? indoor pools. We like your ourselves. pool, uh, your pool. Yeah, my own pool. You have your own pool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you, so, okay, so how are this? What do you mean by this indoor pool? Like 50 meters lap pool? Not 50, not 50 meters. Uh, the largest one is 25 meters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, about 10,000 square feet. 
Yeah. Wow. So I have uh, five five property that's uh, about 10,000 square feet. No, I rented them, like, you know, uh-huh. it's not like I own them, you know. Yeah. So I rented it, 10 years contract, and then I built the swimming pools in it. Uh-huh. And yeah, that that's 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 the bigger scale. And I have a smaller one, uh, about 10 meters pool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's at, not sure if you know uh, Coronation Plaza. Oh yes, we do. Just yeah. very close to Coronation Plaza. It's a stretch of shop house. You know, that was the first one where we are unsure whether we should invest in, you know, such an infrastructure. Uh-huh. But regardless, we just go ahead yeah. and almost went bankrupt. But, you know, but in the end, we make it and it start to grow from there. And that branch is my favorite branch until today. It's uh-huh. still around, yeah. you know? Uh-huh. Flagship, yeah. flagship. Yeah. So, I, so I caught a few things, which I will ask mm. you more questions later, but I heard you almost, almost ran bankrupt. bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, I caught that. So before we go to that, I want to know what, what has Happy Fish now, right? Because I know that you have also expanded to Malaysia. Yes. Yeah, so from a poly project, right? Yeah. Became an expansion all the way to Malaysia. Yeah. Right? So wh- why Malaysia also? Uh... When there's opportunity, I'll definitely, you know, want to expand, Mm. you know, as an entrepreneur, you always look for ways to scale your business Mm. and to solve problems. When I see that, you know, there's similarity between Singapore and Malaysia and I'm Malaysian myself. So it just makes sense for me to just start a swim school over there and see how it goes, you know. Uh Yeah, back then actually, I started that platform for both Singapore and Malaysia. It's just that I didn't manage the Malaysia one. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of inquiry. I didn't manage it at all. Just leave it. You know, I just right. want to choke that seat, the number one spot. Uh-huh. But I don't want to. I don't want to run that business because I have no capacity to run. Right. It. So I have both Singapore and Malaysia, and Singapore make it. Then I look back and say, "Hey, why not? Let's do for Malaysia as well." I see. Yeah. So, so now that Malaysia is, so you're probably expanding Malaysia or looking at other countries as well. Right now, we are looking at Indonesia. Uh-huh. We are uh, crafting our own franchise program with uh, our consultant. Right. Yeah, so when that's ready, we will launch Indonesia and other countries. But the next one will be Indonesia first. Uh, ah, yeah. so, so many people will ask, right? Many of our viewers will ask actually, you know, for you to actually start something in poly or to, to, to where you are today, right? Mm. How is it like of a typical day of a CEO? Typical day of a CEO? Uh, well, it's very uh, dynamic. There is no fixed schedule, you know. Every day, different challenges will throw to your face and uh-huh. you have to um, pick it up, try to solve it like a Rubik cubes. And when you solve that issues, just make it a template, say, nah, this is how it works, guys. Next time you know how to do it. Right. You know, yeah, like no. a, you, you have to do it first. Like, uh-huh. you, know, you have to get your hands dirty, get the formulas right, pass to your team to carry on from there. Is it the same, you know, as your first time? What's been the first time you're a small team, right? Mm-hmm. Is it the same or is it largely different? In the past, it was like, I, I'm Pao la everything, you <laughs> yeah. know, everything yeah. I have to do. Uh-huh. At least, uh, you know, I was in, uh, when I was in school, I have a lot of time. I have a lot mm-hmm. of time, it's like six hours a day. Mm-hmm. So I spend that six hours trying to figure out how things work, you know. Right. Yeah. And I have the luxurious of time. Wow. Yeah, six hours. And I have three months. Three months of six hours, there's uh-huh. a lot of time for me to really research, study, and trial and error. Mm-hmm. So this is a product of a trial and error. There is no R&D, just T and E. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's why they say everybody got 24 hours a day. It, dep- it depends on how what you do with exactly. your time. Okay, yeah. But when you say that, right, what motivates you then in poly to do it? Because most of us in poly, like me, right? Mm-hmm. We, we'll be playing, you know, after after school, we'll be Dota. playing. Dota, yeah, <laughs> Dota, Dota. You're absolutely right, right? Yeah. So, but why? What got you, you know, motivated to do this? Uh, it's, I think, you know, I don't really have a lot of friends. Hmm? Yeah. Don't say that. I was a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no maybe he didn't treat you as a friend. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, actually, there was a story. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, when I was 13 years old, mm-hmm. something happened. You know, uh, uh, my dad was like, you know, trying to get me. I was very into playing computer games. In fact, I played this. Uh, it was 56, you know, the dial up era yeah. where I play an uh, online game. Uh, me and my brother, we took turn to play 24 hours. So I played 12 hours, he will play 12 hours. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, and we were like, 
you know, the highest rank in that game, 50, uh, uh, 56 kbps dial-up, you know, well, sh- I think there are people who just were using ISDN and then some, I don't know whether cable is available back then. Uh-huh. But yeah, that was the era. And then my dad was trying to find a way to let us quit. So what he did was he sit beside us, you know, look into the same screen and just patiently wait, wait to see what's going to happen. Uh, What's the outcome? Uh-huh. And then he's, I think he stayed for about a, a, a week with us. A week? Yeah, a week. Wow. He really, you know, just stayed, sit there and, and didn't ask any question, just watch. And then in the end, he fell sick. He fell sick, uh-huh. uh, high blood pressure. And then he asked us, so uh, how much did we earn? Something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, just right at that, that right moment, he asked, so how much did we earn? Uh, what do we get from this? So I say, oh, nothing. Yeah, we spent a lot of money. I remember we spent about three thousand dollars ringgit. Oh, back then. a lot, yeah. eh? On it's on game because dial up, ma. Uh. Dial up, you need to pay for the all these phone bills, ma. Yes. About three thousand ringgit for I think for a good three months we played. Yeah, and and in the end we decided let's sell the account and we sold it at nine hundred ringgit only. <laughs> oh my god, you can't even make it. <laughs> so then from uh-huh. then on, I was like. No, I think let's play real game. You know, mm. if you want to play games, let's play the real life game. No need to spend time in the virtual world. And that's when you are 13. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, that's where I stopped all this and focus on what's real, what, what's touchable, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I focus on school. And when I come back to poly, I just don't want to touch that computer games where everybody asked me to go. I say no. Uh, uh, I will was, do my own stuff. Yeah. I must very say, hard I must say, <laughs> yeah. Uncle did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> he did like the patience to sit yeah. there and watch. He really, really like one mean, week. He yeah. could have just nagged at you or scolded you, but he didn't. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. I think no, he, he tried that before. Like, uh, it didn't, it didn't work. work like, okay. you know, that was the last resort. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Last resort, and it worked. Yeah, it really worked. So for those who want to use this. <laughs> Use okay. this strategy. <laughs> get ready to get high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Need to be hospitalized first, right? No, you didn't get <laughs> hospitalized. Not it's not just that high that. fever, like oh. lie down on the bed for a few days kind oh. of situation. Oh, but it's bad enough. It's bad enough. You know, when I see that, it's like heartbroken and mm-hmm. I, I just don't want to do it again. Right. Okay. So you found, so I understand that, okay, for the benefit of my viewers out there, our viewers out there, right? Yeah. You found that Happy Fish not alone. Yeah, not alone. Right? Share us. No, no actually, it was alone first for the first three months. Okay. Yeah, it was just me in, you know, in the in the lab, mm. in the school. Yeah. And I just want somebody to share the joy, not the load, uh, the joy. Because actually, life has been so uh, easy for me. When I look at everyone else, hey, you guys are so busy with your life, but... How come I just need to make a few phone calls and then I can, I can go past with my life? You know, uh-huh. it was just agent. You know, I call the coach, I call the students, call the coach. And they just connect. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just want to have a few friends to join me, mm-hmm. and then we all can uh, bang gang early and go and play after that, lah. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I just, you know, uh, back then I, I have already have a good friend, so I get my girlfriend in. And then I get my housemate during the poly days. I get him in. Actually, there was another lady, but uh, she didn't last. She didn't last uh, too long. I think uh, she has her own commitment, so she uh. didn't want to uh, go on this journey mm, together. Not her calling. Yeah, not her yeah. calling. It's fine. So in the end, I have these two partners with me. So three of us. We are like three musketeer every day. Just sit in the sit on the round table and just just keep looking at each other, calling the customer, calling the students calling the coaches and and life was great back then. Okay, I, I, I caught something. I need to yeah. ask as well. Yeah. The then girlfriend is the current wife, right? Yes, that's ah, correct. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> that's current wife. Yeah. Uh, so, your, so your wife, you know, built this empire together with together. you. That's correct. Nice. Wow. Was it easy? <laughs> uh, no, we are basically stuck 24 hours a day, mm. you know. Yeah, we are always together. So there were a lot of conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and when conflict happens, what we did was uh, we fight. Mm. And we just believed that if we fight and we didn't break up, then in the end we'll make it. Aww. 
That's, so just fight lah. Yeah. Just fight, fight. Uh, sometimes a bit physical, like we will, we will, we will throw things okay, lah, okay, whatever. Okay, okay, you know? Just like big, wow, big wow. fight lah, like big fight. Fight. Just fight let la. it uh-huh. out, uh-huh. and we just know that we are here for our future, right? We are here doing things together, and you know anything, just talk it out lah. Just be real lah. No BS, right? Yeah. yeah no right. bullshit. Exactly. No bullshit. Yeah. So to the Viewers out there, right? Just know that he's happily married, three kids. <laughs> Still happily married. <laughs> Still happily married. And okay. we sell them fight now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Most you have finished fighting, you know. They reach a, few, a mutual understanding of each other already, right? Yes. Yeah, so I think, so now that we talk about, you know, fights and all, right? Mm-hmm. Let's touch on the obstacle, the roadblock. Yeah. I heard that you just mentioned that, you know, you almost bankrupt. Bankrupt, yes. Yeah. Well, what's the story about? Uh, it was eight years in my entrepreneurship journey uh, that we decided to build our in, own indoor pool uh, because uh, there was no facilities for our students, for the babies. You know, we, we had the baby program. Uh, when we tried to run it at the public pool, they just keep falling sick. Mm. There was no place for them to really swim. I don't know, is it because the water is too dirty or the chlorine is too high or the water is too cold or the sun is too hot? Mm. You know, stay under the sun for 30 minutes, not easy for babies. Mm. Yeah. So No, babies, we're talking about like how old? Four months old, four mm. months to two years old. Oh, okay. So they just keep falling sick. And I just want something more sustainable. And, you know, I had the idea that why not we build an indoor pool in a shop house. You know, we're trying to find ways to build indoor pools. Uh, we tried uh, industrial property. We called URA, URA say, no, you cannot do that. Uh, uh-huh. And then brings down to commercial property only but it was so expensive you know uh, don't mind just let you know it was a small unit 11,000 back then 11,000 a month 11,000 a month yeah, back 11, then and that was in then. which year? 2014 that's when chicken run is still 250 <laughs> <laughs> 2014 wow yeah I mean we have no choice we just go ahead and then the next problem arise there was no template for us to yeah. know what kind of submission we need we thought we just go in and build and that's it mm. but it wasn't the case we need to check the foundation whether is it enough to hold the swimming pool weight yeah and it was the below it i think it was very near to the the downtown line that they are constructing the the, the okay. MRT station uh-huh. so there was a lot of complication and we cannot get approval uh, until nine months later so you get a lot of experts to come in to study hmm. the loading, the structure, mm-hmm. um, try to do submission. Even LTA wants to come in to us because there was uh, two car park. And then MPA also want to come and uh, want us to do submission because there was a tree just next to us. Right. Just want to make sure the swimming pool will not affect the tree structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were so many wow. things that we do not know. Mm. So it dragged on to nine months before we can start construction. Nine months. But so you already paid for the rental. Paid for the rental. 11,000 yeah. a month. So 11,000 dollars a month. So about 100,000 that we spend for nothing. Wow. Just wait. To yeah. get approval. Yeah. And then uh, the construction took another three more months. <laughs> so it's about a year uh-huh. for nothing. We spent, the budget we put in was about 200,000. But it ballooned up to almost 350,000 like that. Wow. Yeah, so we have to really find our own ways, try to get a loan uh, from our pocket, uh, keep on funding this. Uh. Uh-huh. And the, the, the thing is, two weeks before we, uh, you know, open our shop, right? We have only 60 students. No, 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 less than that. It was like, when we look at it, it was like, oh, is it going to work? Uh-huh. You know, two weeks Op- be- uh, two weeks before opening, we only have this um, this amount of students. Yeah, yeah. I was, everybody was panicked. La. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, cause babies, right? Yeah. And you know, people will be like, oh, correct, should I send correct, my baby? Correct. Is it dangerous? And, and they don't, they didn't see the pool. They don't know how is it. Yeah, you know, how, how does it look yeah, like? Yeah. And things. So people didn't sign up, and we all panicked. We put in so much money. Is it going to you know close shop before we even open? Yeah. But uh, you know, my I, I have uh, my first daughter back then. Uh-huh. Yeah. She was uh just nice, I think one, one plus. And then we brought her to swim. We took a video of her. She swam with a bigger smile. And then we put it on the Was it the underwater yes. picture? Ah, I've seen that picture. Yeah. It was a very nice picture. I didn't expect her to just smile so naturally underwater. She was having so much fun. Uh-huh. And I shot it and then put it on YouTube, it blew up. 
it blew up and suddenly there were so many people coming to, to our school. Wow. Yeah, we have like 60 inquiries a day. Wow. Yeah. And then at the peak, we have, uh, we oversubscribe. You know, the pool can only hold 300 students. Uh -huh. We have 600 students register. Wow. So we were forced to squeeze more students in the pool and everybody rub shoulder when they come into the pool. <laughs> you know, everybody have yes. to rub shoulder, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, kind of thing. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it was a very good experience. Uh, I mean, very encouraging. So we quickly think about setting up another one so that we can ease the load. Right. Yeah, we don't want to give people such a bad experience coming uh -huh. to indoor pool, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's how we got the second one, which is at Hall City, but now it closed. Uh, mm. uh, now it's closed already because government took back the land. So now you're just like building pools like Lego because you really have the template you and you know what template. to do. You're like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so we, we are lacking of space right now. Yeah, there were not enough place, suitable place for us to build in, in Singapore. We just keep finding. La. So you're still searching for more place yeah. to develop. So, okay, so I'm curious now, right? Because mm. what is your client base right now? How many students? Yes. Right? About 6,500. 6,500 yeah. squeezed into 16 pools. 16 pools, yeah. Each pool is wow. about 400, 500 each. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Some bigger one can hold up to 1,000. Yeah, like Jurong East. Jurong East have uh -huh. 1,200. Yeah, I have indoor, wow. outdoor. Now I'm expanding Jurong even more. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build another outdoor pool and another indoor pool. The outdoor pool is not really outdoor, like it's shaded, it's heated, it feels like indoor, but it's windy. You know? Right. It's for kids. Mm. Yeah. So that Jurong East is going to be like so big. I think it can hold up to 3,000 students when we when we finish the, the construction. Right. Wow. Yeah. How long does the construction take? Is uh, we can only take over after Chinese New Year in March okay. uh, 2024. Okay. Right. So when we when after we take over, we will do construction. Maybe we'll get ready by June. Mm. Why? Yeah. So Jurong people, <laughs> you want some <laughs> kids go. to go swimming? <laughs> yeah, just as when this is launched, right? You'll be yeah. preparing for the opening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. So when we talk about that, you know, you talk about, you know, you almost go bankrupt and all, right? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about your own personal wellness, your mental health. Yeah. How do you cope with it? Wow, I tell you, uh, it's not easy. Definitely not easy. But it helps to be a victim of bullying when I was young, you know? You're victim already... of bullying? Yeah, I, so I mean, he, a lot of people bullied. went through, right? Yeah, same, me too. Yeah, so. a lot okay, of people. I just wanted to say this, I didn't bully him. <laughs> <laughs> you can justify it on camera right now. <laughs> you know, when I started my yeah. swimming journey, right, because I was so young, I think <laughs> six years old, I started taking, you know, taking part in competitions, uh -huh. right, in, in, in Johor Bahru. Mm. And all the bigger boys, you know, like, 10 to 12 years old, they see you so small, they just want to bully you. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes uh, there was one, they, they just took my shoe and then and then tie it on the, you know, the the finishing line, the, the, the flag. Oh, the backstroke lane road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. They just tie it there and then I have to swim to the middle and take it down in front of like hundreds of people watching, you know, I have to go and do that. And it was oh. so, I was feel so embarrassed and humiliated, but... Mm. That's life. I know people will just want to bully you to show their their uh -huh. macho. But that's whatsoever. how you, you know? were built. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I look so, at something uh -huh. positive for mm, me. Correct. How did that shape you then? Uh, what does it say it looks positive for you and all right? Yeah. What was the mindset back then? I just want to, you know, be stronger. Mm -hmm. Just motivate me to be stronger, to be more popular, to be to be the to be the center of attention, that kind of thing, you know. But I you just want to make it. you're competitive also, la. Not really competitive. I just, I just want to prove them wrong. Yeah. Like you know, you're going to you now. You bully me. Next time, you probably have to work for me. That kind of thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> there you go, bullies, right? You might be working for the people you bully. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the mindset when I was young. You know, I just want to go past it. So I actually times I, I, I didn't like to go for swimming lessons. Right. Mm. Yeah, because it was filled with so many toxic uh, relationship, you know, uh -huh. not relationship, I mean, toxic bully. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and, and, and life goes on. When I was in school, I have not many friends as well because mm -hmm. I always, uh, I'm always uh, trying to do things, uh, trying to work on something and people just want to have fun but I just keep on trying to work on something. Right. So it's very hard to get very close friend. Mm. So so you mentioned that you know you have like being bullied. 
Mm. All right. Um, you have quarrels with your then girlfriend, now wife, right? Your ex girlfriend, now wife, huh? And you have all those almost become bankruptcies and all, right? My my question to you, right, is actually with all these incidents, mm. were there any point in time that you thought of giving up? Every single day. Every single day. It's every single day. But what my strategy is that I leave myself with no choice, right? When you have option A, option B. When things happen, you will look for option B. Mm -hmm. But when you only have option A, things happen, mm -hmm. you have nowhere to go to but to make it, to just go through it. Right. Yeah. So that's me. I uh -huh. just choose to bite the bullet, you know, take one step at a time, try to uh, get me through that obstacles. And it works. It works for me so far. And it has shaped me into these problem solving skills that when problems arise, Solve it, move on. Solve it, move on. Solve it, move on. Instead of having a plan B, what if this happened, we should do this instead. You know, so it's like when you are running an event, people will think about, oh, what if it rains? So we have a plan B. Mm. Yes. So I will just try to, you know, straight away have no options for me to have this plan B, find an indoor space. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that okay. kind of thing. So I, I don't like to have two plans, plan A, plan B. I just want... One plan, stick to it. Make sure it works. Make sure it works. If not, we have to solve it. Yeah. So it's well thought out. Then after that, you you yeah. know you already know strategically like yeah. what you want to do yeah. next. Can I also ask you one question? Like, how do you manage the stress? You know, like if, when you're stressed and then you're almost giving up. Some people play games. Some people sleep. Some people drink. You know, like what was your stress mechanism like? Uh, wow. wow. How do I cope with stress? Yeah, uh? how do you cope? Yeah. Uh, well... Actually, it's a little bit of everything except playing games. Okay. Yeah. Maybe for now, yeah. social media law. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. you know, TikTok, uh. Yeah, just spend a bit of time for yourself. Um, meditation. Uh, I do some meditation sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I taught my children to do meditation as well when they're naughty. Yeah. Really? So, yeah, we'll just sit in a circle and meditate together. Nice. Yeah. And after meditation, everybody come down and we go back to do our own stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think uh watching movie is my top in the list. Yeah. Just find a good movie, spend two hours with myself. Yeah. And any uh, genre or just those uh uh real life story. Oh real so, real life story. Real life story. Documentaries yeah. Documentaries or what? Yeah. Oh. Like, you know, how people fail and then they get back up and make mm -hmm. it. That kind of story, I like to watch those. Uh, you know, inspiring, really motivating. Inspiring, yeah. So after this story, you'll be like, okay, let's go back. You won't like dwell like one, dwell, 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 dwell. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I just go back one story, one good one, and then go back to work. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A bit of discipline required. Yeah. You know, when you're on social media, it's very hard to I, I don't think it's a, a bit. It's a lot. <laughs> Of discipline yeah. required because for you to say that you totally quit games uh, I know I know uh -huh. because of my wife as well because my wife when uh -huh. he realised that I spent too long on on the screen yeah. he would just walk past me and I immediately know what to do <laughs> I immediately know that oh it's time to switch off so it's a, it's a trigger there your it's wife. a trigger there so uh -huh. sometimes I hear she, when she walked down the steps I will just okay close <laughs> okay go to sleep you know that kind of thing yeah okay, good, so good, she's good. like a reminder to myself mm. yeah, she didn't say anything just that the by by appearing in front of me, you know, it just sent me a signal that it's time to stop. I need to do something else better. Wow. Yeah. wow. Nice. Yeah. So now okay, so I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit here, right? Because um you talk about your wife here, mm -hmm. right? How important of a role did she play in your life in terms of the success that you have now? Everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. Uh, she was uh, a mentor. She was a good partner. Mm -hmm. She was a good backup as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an, a good assistant as well. Mm -hmm. And she's the ambassador caregiver, right? She took care of my ambassadors. Mm. It's like, you know, without her, then I don't think Happy Fish will be where she, we are today. Lah. Yeah, we're probably still running as a platform, no? right? Yeah, no? So, so there's a Chinese saying, you know, behind every successful man, mm. there's a very supportive woman. So this is exactly what it means. Yeah, 
Wow. Yeah. So now also the question is, what about your parents? Because you mentioned that your dad, you know, that, that whole saga with that one week of, yeah. of computer games. Yeah. How is he now? Uh, he's in JB. Mm -hmm. So he stays with my mom and both of them uh, and my brother. Mm -hmm. My sister in Singapore. So only the three of them in, in, in JB right now. Uh, he's semi-retired every day having his uh, best time of his life he's literally a happy fish uh, yeah. he, he, he <laughs> plays golf he goes scuba diving and he also uh, goes to uh, goes to Maldives with me uh, to swim also he goes shark. to Maldives with yeah. you as well yeah. nice wow. yeah, so he's like enjoying his life my, my mom is more like a uh, you know, stay stay at home, zai nu, uh, <laughs> don't want to go out. You just want to uh, watch his TV and then sleep. That kind of enjoyment that to her is enjoyment. Yeah. She yeah. didn't want to go out. She just want to stay in her own comfort zone and and spend spend so with spend all that you have. A so all that you've achieved right now, right? Do you think that actually um whatever they have given to her parents is something that you are actually very happy with? The ability to swim. The ability to sweep. Let's say like, are you happy to, you know, because you've been successful now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll be giving to your parents oh. and be thankful to them okay. and all, right? Yeah. For me, give. Yeah, give back to your parents. Uh, vacation, lah. It's really like, if, you know, when I, I, I sponsor my father to Maldives, that kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. I believe that's the best, like, you know, to spend time with your, with your parents. That's what they want, right? They do. I think the best gift you can give to your parents is for them to know that you're happy. And do that's it. true too yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i uh, you know uh at at times you know sometimes we talk about giving uh you know allowance to to my parents but my parents they have enough they have a lot of money as well i mean they don't need my money what for i give them <laughs> money right mm -hmm. so I just keep thinking you know i think they need my time mm -hmm. you know spend yeah. time with me and that's where i cannot like stay with them so uh -huh. what i can do is that on and off i invite them to trips like this you know and we can spend time together we stay in the same room we chit chat all the night you know mm, yeah that's, that's why I, I choose to do lah. so so let's bring back now you to the business itself because we talk about family we talk about support systems mm -hmm. right and and I was you no know, looking up at you again, right? And researching, right? And I saw an article, mm -hmm. right, during the COVID period, uh -huh. and I saw that you no, know, that actually was quite a very inspiring story because my friend in COVID period, his staff took a pay cut, uh -huh. right? Voluntarily, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a bit of forceful, lah. You know, hundred <laughs> percent voluntarily, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, a bit of forceful, mm -hmm. but you know, it's for survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without that, we will definitely die. You know, we are already burning about 300 to 400,000 for Singapore only, not talking about Malaysia. Uh -huh. Sing dollar, 300,000 a month. A month, a month. wow. Yeah, we were burning a lot and we don't have a lot savings to begin with uh -huh. because our margin is so thin. Uh, the setup cost is so expensive and we cannot charge that high. Yeah. Yeah, so it's already there and we have to think away, think of a way quick, quickly lah. Right. So first thing, of course, we look at our expenses. The biggest expense is uh, the rental. Rental is about 30 to 40 percent. Mm -hmm. And we have to defer it no, quickly. No? Ask mm -hmm. for the, the rental to be deferred. And then luckily, the government also helped with uh, the rental for four months. But we were closed for 10 months, by the mm, way. Yeah. yeah, we were the... That six months, you had to pay your own pocket. Yeah, we were the second worst hit industry after KTV, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Because the children cannot wear masks to swim, right? Yeah, and they cannot be vaccinated, right? And it's indoor, right? Basically, yeah. we are all the on the other side of the no-no-no. The no, central, no, no, the no, no, no spectrum. You know? Essential. Yeah, yeah. The most non essential. Non-essential, whatever. <laughs> la. So we are, we are we fall through the cracks. Nobody can help us. We have to help ourselves. So we contact the landlord. Let's defer. I say, it's not like I don't want to pay you. Just give me time. So defer first. La. And then we also look at the the salary. La. The salary I asked to, def uh, to, to, to cut I think we only pay allowance of uh, about seven or eight hundred dollars. I forgot the exact number. And then the, the there's a sum of amount we defer their salary. We pay later. So uh -huh. basically everything we try to defer, 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 and then we took a loan. Right. Mm. Yeah, we took a loan from the bank. I think we took three loans. Yeah, uh, from three major banks, we take like five hundred thousand each. Okay. Wow, that's one point yeah. five million. Yeah, we have to. Uh -huh. We have to think of a way to digest this amount of loan, you yes, know, to right. pay back this loan is already a huge sum, right? Yes. 
Yeah. So what we did was we took out a sum of money and we bought a yacht. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you yeah, bought, yeah, you took a sum of money. Jump too fast. Yeah, I didn't expect that too. Jump too fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's a story. La. So uh-huh. um, because there were a lot of, we have to think fast, right? Now we cut this. Now we, we reduce, we defer our expenses. But it's still burning. It's just that we have to pay back later. Maybe pay back double next time, you know? Mm. Yeah. So we have to think of a way to sustain this this amount of yeah. debt, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. So how? we Do we go and deliver, deliver food? Or do we sell fruits? Do we do live stream to sell? Do we do e-commerce? Mm-hmm. There's uh-huh. so many things we, we are discussing, but nothing really hits my heart because I, I don't want to you know, Chris. divert too much into another business that has no synergy with Happy Fish. Yeah. Yeah. So I think after I think so hard, I think invest in a yacht mm. rental business is the best mm. that we can do. Because the yacht, we can use it to bring our students out to swim in the sea. Right. So it complements Happy Fish when COVID is over. So so we bought the yacht. Uh-huh. It was fire sale. Okay. The people yeah, yeah. were panicking as well. At that time, well. a lot of people were yeah. buying yachts. Yeah. 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 yeah really, really. Wow. A lot of people are selling, and mm. and that the yacht that I bought worth five hundred thousand. I bought it at two hundred eighty thousand. Good deal. Yeah, good deal. Actually, at it was selling at two hundred sixty thousand at first. Uh huh. But the the owner, the previous owner, just want to raise it up a little bit higher, just right before we sign. Huh. Yeah, raise it out. I say, never mind. 280000 fine. So I took the loan from the company. I don't want to put the financial burden to them. You know, right. what if it fail? So yes. I just say, okay, guys, I'm going to took this loan from the company. I'm going to buy a yacht. And when I make it, I'll pay back the company. You yes. know, it's I, like a private loan in a way. Private like, loan. Arrangement. Yeah. 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 yeah, back then. Uh. So because... And also no one really understand what what is it all about. You know, I tried to explain the coaches. There were, there were some coaches who wasn't very happy. Mm-hmm. They were like, why are you still buying a yacht right yeah. now? Are you trying to kill our business or what? Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't understand. But I, I tried to explain it's an investment. And then to them, it's expenses. They say nobody can make money out of yacht. Mm-hmm. I say, I think I can. Okay. You know, I think I can. So after proper research, I bought it. I set it up, ran it up to people. Just nice. When I finished setting it up, the government announced that we can go out in yes. a group of eight. I remember. Oh, wow. Group of wow eight. You really are timing. Uh, timing. Divine. Very, like, you yeah, it's divine. very good timing. So every day we went out twice, two times. Two times a day. Uh-huh. And every time the profit can go up to 1,005. Mm. 1,005 to 2,000. People willing to pay, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's only groups of eight. They will definitely go out during that yeah, time. So go out and yeah. when you cannot go overseas, the best thing you can go is to go to sea. Ah, correct. That's what I thought. Same thing. Yes. That's what I thought. You cannot go overseas, you go to sea. Mm. So it works. And it works. And we, uh, you know, we save enough money. We pay back. We clear the loan, everything. And the interest, not, 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 not clear the, the 1.5 million, but the interest and also the repayment, you know, we are on time, we are sustaining, and then uh-huh. we slowly digest the big amount that we have to pay back the debt. So we use that, pay back slowly, you know, and luckily lah. So after paying back everything, uh, we bought another yacht. So now we have two. <laughs> so now you have two yachts. Nice, yeah, two nice, yachts. nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so think it's luckily leh. for him it's really very like you, it's very strategic and you have yes. vision and I think that is very important like the vision is there but the strategy is very vague you know mm. but I was uh, I am the person that I don't need to have a very clear um, strategy to yeah. act because mm-hmm. for me I, in, in, in Chinese we call ji hua kam sang bian hua you know, mm. I know things are always changing. That mm. you cannot just say, okay, this is the way, and and you plan like option A, option B, la. Yes. I just know that this is the way, and let's go in this way and solve the problem along the way. Mm. That's my right. that's my way mm. of doing things, la. So yeah. so now that you have sixteen pools, two yachts. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> more more baby. pools. <laughs> more pools. More yachts. Yeah. Because okay. we are we are we are we are now bringing our students. Uh, each. For each, uh, uh, each, what's that? Uh, 
each every three months, right. we'll bring uh, every school holiday. Yeah, every school holiday in March, June, September, December, uh-huh. we'll invite our students to come on board. Uh, we bring them to Lazarus Island to swim. Because right. I strongly believe swimming shouldn't be confined into four walls. Yes. You should be able to swim anywhere and you must have the confidence to swim uh-huh. just like how you walk. Mm. That's my vision, you know, to my students. I don't want to for them to go to the beach and think twice, uh, do I want to jump in now? Uh, should I jump in? I want them to be, nah, let's go, just jump in just like how they walk, you know, just right. walk into the water. Lah. Yeah, so I bring them out invite them free of charge as a complimentary service for those who stay with us long enough. Uh-huh. Just bring them and they were so happy and I man, I, I can connect with the students yes. and the students become my friend. Mm. You know, yeah. the, 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 the top the relationship, the, relationship. the bonds. So it's so good to have the yacht with, uh, you know, to, to, to work together with Happy Fish mm-hmm. and with more yachts, we can bring more students and at the same time, we can run it like, you know, as a separate business. So it's all everything fall in place yeah. for me. In case the viewers right is thinking right, I need to clarify something to you. These are not babies, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no babies. <laughs> we don't put babies. We don't put babies into the the sea. Yeah, no. Ah, okay. So so happy fish right now teaches from four months. Yeah. To to how old? To twelve years old and actually adults as well. But uh, adults usually is just one course of ten lessons, uh-huh. and then they will be able to swim already. Right. Yeah. So, so let me go back to the, the last part right now of the whole podcast, right? And ask you a few key questions uh, more to, to put into yourself, mm. right? I have many viewers out there, right? They're in their 20s, you know, they are wondering, you know, should I be a career path? What sort of career path should I be taking? You know, should I be an entrepreneur like you? Should I go to kind of be a corporate, right? What sort of advice will you give them? Uh, there is so many paths that we can, you know, you can do. First, you need to know what's your personal life mission. What, what do you want to achieve? Uh, do you want to be famous, successful? Or do you want to uh, have a good family? What do you want? You know, you must know this. Just like you start a company, you need to have a vision, mission, statement, everything in place. Then only you know what to do. So for this, you, once you know where you want to go, then you can choose your path. You know, mm. there's no no right or wrong to, to be, you know, or, or good and bad to be uh, entrepreneur or corporate or or just do something freelance. There's, you know, and anything, just as long as it fits into your mission and vision, um, your personal vision, that, that's good enough. You know, like being an entrepreneur may look glamorous when you make it, but what if you don't make it? Mm. Right? right then you are the then you are the clown already lah. <laughs> like, ah, you, you still yeah um, and, and and there are people who are more successful and more uh, getting higher salary being a corporate uh, yep. staff as well right yeah yeah and freelancer there are freelancer who really earn so much you know so you don't really have to be an entrepreneur just if you know you just need to know what you want then you choose a path that fits into your agenda Mm, yeah. Okay, okay. I have one question also. Yeah. So how do you define success and what do you think young entrepreneurs or the younger people mm. should focus on to achieve it? Um, for myself, in the past, I always thought, you know, like having more money, having more power, uh, being able to command is considered successful. Mm-hmm. Now? Yeah. Now, with three kids and beautiful family I would say being able to spend time not working <laughs> <laughs> being able to spend time just look at them just spend time with them not thinking of anything else that's the best mm-hmm. without worrying about financials nothing. exactly without worrying about anything you just spend time go on trips go on holiday you know grow up with them participate in their life events Mm. Mm. that's more important for me right now so can I say that you define success in a way whereby they have you have a freedom of choice freedom of choice mm. that's correct nice. Yeah. nice but when you say that right it's what's in today's world is very competitive yeah how do you balance it don't join the race why, why do you create your own race yeah hey, no no I, okay okay since we are on no, no BS kind yes, of yes yes yeah. definitely let, let's let's just talk about this very quickly. 
you know, I never send my kids to school. Oh, really? Never send my kids to school. How old is the oldest one now? Nine. Nine? Mm. Homeschool? Oh, homeschool. Yeah, I, wow. I know a lot of very, like, very well-to-do people that homeschool their children right now. Yeah. Homeschool. Because yeah. firstly, it's very stressful to go to school. Uh-huh. Way before we try to we try to submit their names. You need to ballot. La. You need to do. Right. Uh, you need to do parents volunteer. La. There's so many things that you have to do just to send your kids to the school that is closer to your house or yeah. not. You know. Firstly, I was like, oh, very competitive. You know, mm-hmm. very stressful. Uh, should I do it? Uh, yeah. So why not? Is there any alternative? Yeah, homeschool. So what's the what's what's it? it what what's the requirement? Uh, well, first we have to be, you know, the pa- either parents has to be bachelor degree and above. Mm. Yeah, I don't have it. Mine only diploma. So during COVID, I went to study master degree. Oh, wow. MBA, <laughs> wow. Just wow. to make my kids stay home. Just to get a criteria. Yes. MBA suits me, right? Yes. You know, I can use the knowledge. Mm. And but I don't really need to study because I believe in street smarts as well. Right. But when I after I study, I realize that there's a lot of other useful stuff. Yeah, very useful stuff that mm-hmm. really helps me in uh, running my business. Right. But the the initial thought was actually just to get a degree so that she would not need to go to school. Right. Yeah. So I just want her to stay home, build her character, see how life let the life teach her. Mm-hmm skills mm. yeah she also followed the syllabus you know she's still doing well in chinese english math um science you know she was doing all those stuff and right. and she also has time to do piano and ballet uh-huh. you know follow her passion what she really likes to do and then spend time with daddy and then always listen to what daddy say over the phone <laughs> and then she'll ask question daddy what is this about uh, what, 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 what. she always asks very good question wow that's always a skill very, uh, that's a yeah. skill it's always ask very good yeah. question yeah. When, good. when I talk to my wife something very sensitive she uh. caught it she will come in questions ask one you know oh really she'll come nine in questions nine years old yeah nine years old she will say uh, why you say uh, this and when you do things you do that you know we have to nice. we have to oh, tell her wow. the, 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 the reason, rational behind rational, it. a lot of yeah the rational behind a lot of things and then she also uh, imposed her own uh, thinking, thinking. Uh-huh. onto us you know she was she was a veg- she, she is a vegetarian oh since the beginning yeah I'm not my wife's not huh? But yeah. she, she, is. Chose, she is. She chose to she be chose. vegetarian. Yeah, she chose. Wow. Okay. I think uh, maybe I exposed her to a lot of animals when she was young. Uh-huh. She traveled a lot when she was a baby. Uh-huh. Yeah, before COVID. Like, she travels a lot. And then we always bring her to, you know, she swam with whale when she was four years old, you know. Wow. Yeah, she swam with the whale, humpback whales uh-huh. in Tonga. So she has a lot of encounter like that. When she realized that that's meat, that's animal, she chose right. not to eat. And she asked us, all of us, we shouldn't eat as well. So we have to be vegetarian when we are at home. Yeah, only when during social, when we go out, then we have a chance to eat. If not, we, when we are at home, we have to be vegetarian. Correct. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so that's it. You know, when you talk about your daughter, it's like, all right. Yeah. Then, because that's how you bring up your daughter. And yeah. you talk about your dad, you know, bringing you up. Yeah. Are there other mentors in your life that help you to do where you are today? Well, there are. There are. I have a business mentor. Yeah, I think three of them. Three of them? Three wow. of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. In different stage, they come in at different stage uh, and give me very good advice on how to be a be person with integrity. Uh-huh. That's how you can go far. The first mentor teach me how to be a person of integrity, you know, do things the correct way so that it will last you forever and not you know, having a lot of pitfalls in life and, and whatnot. The second mentor taught me how to scale my business. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the third mentor is uh, my, the investors mm-hmm. uh, who hold my hands and go through all the challenges with me. Yeah, right. so I'm very grateful for the three mentors that I have. Yeah. Wow, awesome. Yeah, really. So that's it, right? Here, right, as a mentor, right, to our viewers out there, yeah. right, is there any personal advice that you want to give it to them? Personal advice. Mm. Uh, I think the best advice I can give right now is to tell the audience, no matter how, uh, what path you are choosing or what 
career you want to embark on, you need to have patience. I think that's what is lacking in our society right now because of the instant gratification. Even, even for my parents, they just want things to done fast now. You know, last time they can choose to wait to have patience for things to happen, but now it seems that everybody is in a rush to get things done. So to have patience, it's very uh, important when you try to do something big. It cannot be done in just just uh, instant. You need to really. Grow it step by step to build it to make it happen. So that's the best advice I can give to have patience. Mm. So usually we will end this off by asking you what's the one word you can give to uh, inspiring young entrepreneurs out there. So I think you already I covered that, yeah. Which is <laughs> patience. patience. <laughs> yes. Yeah, patience. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So before we end off, right, this show, right, I still have a bit of time with you, right? Anything else you want to tell our viewers out there? Have fun. Life is all about, you know, uh, being yourself and mm -hmm. do what you can, do your best, have no regrets. Even if you say something wrong, I don't think there's anything we need to cut in this podcast. <laughs> I don't believe in, uh, you know, I embrace mistake. Mm. I make a lot of mistake mm -hmm. and embrace it. You know, apologize, move on. You don't need to think, I should have said this just now. I forget to say this. I have said wrong thing. It can be done better this way. But if you have all this thought, right, you will you won't be happy. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you, hinder you have done. You from movement also. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whatever is done, just move on and uh do it better next time. Okay. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The no bullshit stories from Mr. Tian Yong. Thank you very much for coming to our show today. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having for me. Coming. And that brings us to the end of our inspiring session with Tian Yong. I really, really think that he's a very inspiring entrepreneur. Yeah. And that shows us that, you know, uh, you can be an entrepreneur, right? Even when you're still schooling. Correct. <laughs> for that, we are very deeply grateful to Tian Yong for sharing his invaluable insights. I hope this podcast has ignited your mission do join us for more no butcher stories from successful individuals on Mission Ignite. See ya. Hi guys, thank you for listening. If you like what you have just heard, follow us for more content like this.